Hey everybody, it's me, Remy, the comic book poser, and I'm here to invite you to enter the Poserverse. Uh, this is another one of my weekly Polish videos where I'm going to talk about the books that I hope uh, to pick up on Wednesday the 24th at my LCS. So here we go. Hey, hey, the champ is telling you to do something. All right, you know what? You, you know what? You know what just happened? Because you didn't do what he said? You know what? You know what? You just made the list! The first two books of this week are from AWA. Uh, the first book is Red Border, number two of four from AWA slash Upshot. Uh, I really enjoyed book number one of this that came out of, like the second week of new comics. It's about people fleeing from Mexico to the United States because they're being hunted down by a drug cartel that they went and snitched on the police. And at the end of book one, they are picked up by uh, someone who seems like he's in the right place at the right time to help them, but he looks creepy. And in looking at the house on the cover of issue number two, I, I don't think it might end very well for our people who are fleeing the cartel. Uh, but it's an interesting story. This is my first uh, interaction with Jason Starr as, as a writer. Uh, the same thing with the two artists that Conrad and Nunez aren't names that, you know, bounce off of something in the top of my head, but I thought it was a pretty, uh, pretty good first issue that I'm excited to see what happens in the second book. The second book that's coming out this week from AWA is Year Zero Number Two. I missed picking up Year Zero Number One from my LCS. Uh, but I found it uh, at the other uh, comic book shop in my town that I'm not that big of a fan of going to. Uh, and I haven't read the first one yet, but everybody that I listen to, all of the streams, everybody else's videos, everybody I follow on Twitter, really, really, really liked Year Zero number one. So I'm excited to be able to sit down and read them side by side on Wednesday. I'm a big fan of, of Ben Percy. I really like he's done on his few books of Wolverine that have come out, and I think he's writing X, X-Force, whichever one of the Dawn of X titles he's he's writing. I also like what he's got going on there, and I think this blood-spattered uh, subway cover is pretty interesting. We got one book coming out this week from Boom, uh, Once in Future, number eight. I really, really enjoyed this story, uh, and I thought in terms of looking at how the first arc ended where you know, they were dealing with the Arthurian legend and it's like, okay, what what do they do next? Can you just keep telling the tale of, or your tale of, of Arthur for the next couple of books? And then seeing that the next arc is going to involve, I think it was, it, shit, it was either Beowulf or Gilgamesh. Uh, it's one of those two kind of ancient tale, great deal of lore uh, in mythos, but I'm see, how how this tale continues to play its way out that if with each arc they can kind of pick a different literary starting point and play with it i think that's pretty cool in terms of dc books batman number 93 is out uh i'm intrigued as we kind of work on the march towards the joker war i you know picked up two books of nightwing to be able to check that out and while i you know didn't enjoy it that nightwing wasn't for me i like what tinyan's doing on uh, the Batman book that yeah, I'm a big fan of everything that he's put out thus far. I also thought book number 92 was good. That was it worth all of the hype building up to revealing who Punchline is? Maybe not, but I'm interested to see what continues to play out in kind of the grand scheme of things, especially in a world where we know that the designer is terrified of the and with the Joker as we've seen each of their criminal plans play out in terms of their conversations with the designer, I think we found a new way to make the Joker even more terrifying than he already is. The next DC book is Batman Smile Killer. It's a DC Black title. I think this one is also written by uh, Jeff Lemire that I really have liked um, these in-depth kind of Batman universe style of black labels that I really like Joker Killer Smile. I really like the question. Uh, I thought Harleen and Joker Harley Criminal Sanity were are very good tales, so I'm intrigued to at least uh, pick up Batman Smile Killer number one. 
The Flash 756 is out this week. I, again, have been enjoying what Williamson and his team have been doing on this arc of The Flash that once we saw kind of everything go down in terms of the team up between Godspeed and the reverse Flash and the Flash and their battle against the Paradox and then you know, of course, what happens at the end in terms of reverse flash is going to reverse flash. Uh, I'm intrigued to see what happens in the in the next layer of the story. The next one in terms of eight anniversary books that have come out, uh, Green Lantern 80 is, is coming out. I am getting more into enjoying the Green Lantern that this is going to be one of those books that I think I'll probably pick up instead of sitting on it or waiting to see if there are any, you know, available in a couple of weeks. I don't know which cover I'm going to get that I literally just, you know, grabbed one of these covers off of a comic book list or Midtown and was like, yeah, here's a Green Lantern cover. Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey number two come out. This is another black label book that I, I like what's happening in, in both of those Harley Quinn titles that have come out in the black label format. Uh, I still haven't seen the movie yet, and I know that I need to watch it. The book that is coming from DC this week that I'm probably the most excited about is Superman Pal, Jimmy Olsen number 11, that I think what Fraction and Libra have done with this run has been uh, phenomenal, that all of these little stories that don't seem like they all fit together all the time, or it feels like kind of that golden or silver age, like comic strip throwback, uh, or almost some of the stories have like a funny pages feel to them where you're just digesting, you know, 12 small panels and it tells a complete story until you see the next book. So I'm very excited to see number 11 this week and I'll be sad when book 12 uh, comes out in a couple of weeks because I've really enjoyed this title. Uh, it's just been fun, but it will be nice to be able to sit down and kind of binge read all 12 of this maxi series together to kind of see things that I might have missed in terms of just kind of digesting the little stories from week to week and kind of see if I can find the bigger uh, meta thread uh, throughout some of the most absurd, you know, tiny stories throughout. I'm really, really excited about my first image book this week. Uh, it's Die number 11 that I didn't start reading Die until the quarantine. And then I picked up both uh, both of the first. I don't do a lot of tabletop role playing games. Uh, I think the concept that Kieran Gillen and, and his team came up with on this book in terms of people being trapped in in a role-playing game in the world that they've created uh, because maybe they are just another piece in somebody else's puzzle uh, is a very interesting one that the second trade kind of ends where the group is split in half, that half of the group is on the run while the other half of the group is kind of seized power uh, in the world. And I'm just excited to see what the, the next arc has to do, where it takes us, because I think this has been a, a pretty fun story. Uh, the second image book that's coming out this week uh, is That Texas Blood number one that a lot of people who, you know, I've checked out that do previews of, of image books or of a lot of different books, I guess, really have started hyping uh, That Texas Blood up. I don't know a lot about Chris Condon, but I know that Jacob Phillips is the colorist on uh, Brubaker's uh, Criminal and that this is his first book as a solo artist so it'll be interesting to see his take on kind of this crime tale that gets put together and it it looks like an interesting read and i have not been disappointed by very many image books in the year that i've been. in terms of marvel the books that are coming out this week are kind of yo-yo-ish for me so in terms of the first marvel book that i'm picking up i've liked these snapshot books that have come out captain america comes out this week the two that have preceded it were the Submariner and um, it was either just the Human Torch or it was the Fantastic Four as a whole, but it told the Human Torch's story. Uh, and I like seeing Human Torch, uh, the Submariner and Captain America now because they were all part of the original Invaders. Uh, and I like that storyline. I like uh, Namor the Submariner and I like seeing how they come together that these are kind of interesting one-shot tales of each of these characters in death. The second Marvel book that's coming out is uh, Peter Porker, The Spectacular Spider-Ham, number five. I don't know why I like this book, but I do. Uh, it's punny in terms of all of the, the animals who are there. It's good humor. 
it's fun watching, you know, Peter Porker, the the pig, be the, the redheaded stepchild of all of the Spider family. Screws everything up. So I'm I'm excited to pick this book back up. That it's a good, fun, light for me uh, every time it's come out. And then I think my last Marvel book for five. I really like what Kate Klein and Wilson are doing on this. Uh, I like seeing as kind of the Google in in the black and kind of choosing his battle when he will control of situations versus when he will kind of allow Galactus to use the work of his full might. This is this is another book that I'm really excited about, that this has been one of the non like event based Marvel books or you know, I'm reading all of the X-Men stuff that I, I like this Marvel book because it's a good deep story. The art is is beautiful. It's an interesting take on what they're doing with Thor. And I only have to one, read one book and not 12 million crossovers to understand it. Next book, Rogue Planet number two is coming out. It's Cullen Bunn, uh, Andy McDonald, and Nick Filardi. Uh, this is through Oni Press. I really like the first book that came out a couple weeks ago that the idea of the living, breathing planet that people are junking on that apparently comes to attack them is interesting. The first book ended with kind of the the shot of lungs coming out of the planet and some of the crew of the salvaging ship being attacked by whatever being it is. Uh, and I believe the way I summarized my review of this book on uh, the blog was, you know, uh, it's a Cullen Bun space story that is also a Cullen Bun horror story. Two things that I like together makes this just a good fun fun, you know, thrill book for me. Uh, the last book that I don't know if uh, I got put on my pull list in time for my show for it because he gets, you know, not a lot of vault books all the time, uh, but Bleed Them Dry number one comes out this week. It is set in the year, I think it's 3330, where there are vampires living in a futuristic, like, mega tech city in Japan and they worked out a good like agreement situation where the immortal vampires and mortals can live side by side that there aren't massive spikes of violence uh until i believe what happens in this book is that someone starts attacking vampires and then it gets a little crazy but i think this is a cool story i've been enjoying uh each new to me title as i pick them up uh and i'm you know i'm excited to check this out whenever I can get my hands on it. So that's everything I'm looking to get this week. If there's anything you think I missed, if there's anything that you're like, no, damn it, you shouldn't buy buy that book or I previewed it and it's not very good. Or you are like, no, nah, this book's hot. You should get two copies. Uh, but if you've got any suggestions or thoughts on anything that I should pick up this week, anything that I've missed, I should take a second look at please let me know. Uh, make sure hit that like button. Give me give me some subscription love. We are getting closer each day to our 100th sub giveaway of this copy of uh, Metal Number no. 1, the the Midtown variant cover. So if you, if you like what I'm doing, hit those two buttons. If not, uh, thanks for stopping by. Have a good one.